Hey there, this is Mr. Pi. We're going to be talking about rational exponents today. First thing to understand about rational exponents is that uh, we can use a rational exponent to write radical expressions. Uh, similar to radical form, the exponents always indicate the principal root. We can see several examples here. The square root of 25 is equal to 25 to the one-half power. The cube root of 27 is equal to 27 to the one-third power. And the fourth root of 16 is equal to 16 to the one-fourth power. Each time you can see, the index is the denominator of the rational exponent, and the numerator is 1 in each case. Let's simplify these expressions. Uh, this is a pretty easy thing to do. Converting it into radical form may be a little easier for you to understand at this point. If we take the cube root of 125, you want to think of what number can I raise to the third power to get 125. And hopefully, with your Algebra 2 experience, you realize that would be 5 to the third power, and the third root of 5 to the third power is equal to 5. We have... 5 to the 1 half power times 5 to the 1 half power. Writing those as radicals, hopefully you'll be able to recognize this would be the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. That gives the square root of 25, which you should know is equal to 5. In this particular example, example C, where you have 10 to the 1 third power times 100 to the 1 third power, We'll convert those to radical form first. That'll give us the cube root of 10 times the cube root of 100. Now, we can't take the cube root of either of those numbers, but when we multiply these together, since they have the same index, we can do that. That'll give us the cube root of 1,000. And because the cube root of 1,000 can be written as the cube root of 10 to the third, this simplifies to 10. Moving into rational exponents when the denominator is not 1 like it is here. Uh, this is what we've already studied. That a to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a. Now, here we can have situations where the numerator of the rational exponent is not 1. We represent that with the variable m. So a to the m over n power is equal to the nth root of a to the m power. Or we could express that and evaluate it as the nth root of a, then raised to the m power. The order in which we use these powers does not matter. If m is a negative number, then a must be not equal to 0. Simply writing these in radical form, pretty easy process to do. You know you're going to have the x and a radical. The denominator indicates the index, and the numerator indicates the power. Now we could also write that as the fifth root of x, and then evaluate it to the third. So we could write it either one of these ways. To write y to the negative 2 and 5 tenths power as a in radical form, first we're going to want to convert this decimal number into a improper fraction. It's going to be negative. And since that is 2 and 1 half, that would give us negative 5 halves power. And so putting this into radical form, would give us the square root of y to the negative 5 power. Now, either one of these powers can be negative. One of them has to be negative, so we'll make one of them negative. Here we move to writing something in radical form, in exponential form. Uh, remember, if there is no index, the index is 2. So this would be a, this is the denominator. The index is the denominator. The 
power is the numerator, so this would be a to the 3 halves power. Here we have the fifth root of b taken to the second power. I remind you that the index is the denominator, so we'll have a denominator of 5 in our rational exponent, and the power is the numerator, so this would give b to the 2 fifths power. Example 3 brings us to a word problem. It says time and hours needed to cook a pot roast that weighs p pounds can be approximated by using the equation t is equal to 0.89p to the 0.6 power to the nearest hundredth of an hour. How long would it take to cook a pot roast that weighs 13 pounds? This is a straight application of the equation t is equal to 0.89 times p raised to the 0.6 power. First the thing I'm going to suggest that you do is you write that down. p is equal to 0.89 p to the 0.6 power to the nearest of an hour. So we're going to be solving for t time. And we need to substitute in 13 for the weight because it tells us P is the weight in pounds up here in the problem. So pretty simple problem to do. 0.89 times 13 to the 0.6 power. Now you're going to probably want to use your calculator to do this, which would probably be a good idea. And you would just enter 0.89 times 13. Now if you're using a calculator, um, they're going to probably look for this key right here. It's a caret key, and that means to raise to a power, and you'll just enter that, and then the 0.6. Press Enter, and it says to the nearest hundredth of an hour, uh, this comes out to be approximately equal to 4.147, and it goes on. It seems to be irrational. A uh, hundredth of an hour is here, so that'd be approximately 4.15 hours. Key thing when solving a word problem is to focus on what you need to solve and make sure you substitute the given information into the correct number. That's all I have for rational exponents right now. I'll be back shortly with another video with a couple more examples on simplifying expressions. Remember the key thing when working with rational exponents and radical form is that when you have a to the m all over n, it can be written as the nth root of a to the m, or it can be written as the nth root of a to the m power. This has been Mr. Plarsky, and I hope you've enjoyed your ride.